This week's shout out is to Crumble Cookie. Oh my gosh, would you look at that? People. Can't hear me mukbang or chew or whatever the situation is. What is a mukbang? Exactly. What is a mukbang? For you dirty thinkers, it's not what you might think it is. I mean, that could have a dirty connotation. But has it been a thing for a long time? Okay, here's the ASMR. Mm-hmm. It's been in South Africa. Is an online audiovisual broadcast in which a host consumes various quantities of food while interacting with the audience. Do they lick their fingers like that? I cannot tell you. All right. Well, I'm going to let you do the honors. Okay. All I know is. Okay. For you carb loving calorie divas, mm, I don't know. We told you we're all off sugar. We try to be, we try our best to be off of sugar. That is good. But, would you like to do the intro for the show, Christy? Well, welcome. We have some news. <laughs> we have some news. You want to tell everybody our news? That I just discovered who Nick Avocado was. Or I guess I could knew the name, but I just never really... Is it Nick Avocado or is it Nick Avocado Avocado? He goes by Nick Avocado, but it's Nick Avocado Avocado. And his favorite fruit is the avocado. Possibly. I do believe I've Cannot that. speak for him. But would you like to give a special shout out to somebody on this episode? No, I'm okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, with that being said, our special news is we're flying solo, folks. Solo. Um, I'm not going to elaborate on that. Just say we're here. We're doing this solo. Uh, Reagan, we love you, but she has moved. And so... We're like, look, if we're going to make this fly, we've got to figure out these chops and do it on our own. So here we are, flying solo. Um, So if you've noticed a lack in production lately, um, we apologize. We were waiting on our new camera equipment. We don't need to apologize. We are given some of the best television out there. We're we're getting there. We're getting there. Nobody Um, wants to be watching those presidential debates. Exactly. The presidential debates are happening at this very moment while we decided to pop off to the studio and eat in front of you and uh, bring Winslow to visit. Um, But yes, let's touch on Nick Acato Avocado. Okay. He's got, first of all, I can't believe there's four million people in the world that follow him that watch him do disgusting things with food. Really? I want you to Google how much... How many views has mukbang, since it became a trend, have received since it started? And again, for those of you that don't know, mukbanging, and I'm sure most of you who are on social media have seen this. When you go on Instagram, TikTok, all those places, and you see people in, there's girls in their car now where they'll take, they've got a whole pot of crab in the driver's seat of their car, and they're laying out these there's one girl, she ha- travels with a picnic basket, and she's making the spread. She's cutting the onions. She's cutting the tomatoes. She's laying out this, and it's a, it's a divine sandwich. I mean, she even popped off the head of a pepperoncini pepper and sprinkled that juice up onto that sandwich and put chips on it, like my divine sandwich. But she's doing it in her car. And eat, like, where is she doing this, and why is she in her car? Why is she, is she living in her car? No, it doesn't appear to be, like... A tiny living situation. Just on TikTok, yeah. as of last week, there were four million videos with a mukbang hashtag. Just posted last week. Well, in entirety. Right. Okay. And there's people who have made fat money, but then I say that, but then I see these people with crabs that are bigger than Winslow, and I'm like, how much is it costing you just for this meal? And the amount of food people are consuming because it's an obscene amount of food right yes but it's like it doesn't make sense to and some of these girls are insanely skinny like a lot of asian girls so you think well that's the thing so you think okay but at his height nick avocado who we've seen everywhere is from five four to five seven but not overly tall 411 pounds 
at his heaviest. And he, he had been fooling his viewers for the past two years. He had pre-recorded a bunch of material and they still thought they had the same Nick Avocado. And he hadn't really posted since spring. And he has a panda hat on head and says, I have a big reveal, and takes it off to reveal a 253-pound weight loss. I took had it two years. Yeah. When I saw the news drop that this was, I was like, there's no way this can be real. He is someone that when I first was introduced to his content, I remember just thinking, this is, and this is the part that's scary, his content on some level was grotesque like I think a lot of the mukbang stuff is grotesque like there's it's gluttony it's a it's this overindulgence and people who enjoy watching that I don't know if it's for the ASMR stuff or what but like Nick Akato Avocado so does he make noises why he does this one episode he has an entire box of pizza in one episode he ate 28 burgers but this pizza episode he's taking the pizza out and he's slapping himself in the face with a piece of pepperoni pizza and like chewing with his mouth open and he's got like, you know, those Takis, those rolled like chips that have blue coating or there's green coating or it's spicy or, you know, it's the kind of stuff you eat it and, you know, you're going to be in the bathroom for the next three days. Like that was his go-to. And so you're watching this obese man. I wonder what he spent a month on food. Right. But you're watching this obese man at 400 pounds shovel in ramen noodles that are neon blue for... An hour. Why? Exactly. And that's the point. So when we were watching his episode earlier today, and he's doing the, you know, the talk, and he's got the panda head on, he launches into this whole thing of he stopped doing what he was doing two years ago. Right. But to have posted that kind of pre-recorded content for the last two years while he's been shedding the weight. He said he even shaved his head so that people in the public wouldn't, wouldn't recognize, recognize him. him. Right. But so for two years, think about all the millions of views his pre-recorded content has received, the feedback that people have given on what they believed to be real. Right. And the energy they wasted calling him fat, calling him, you know, whatever they said to him. The in, bullying and the shaming. You know how bad the trolls can Whatever be. engagement they were doing during those two years. Right. Look at all of the, the sorry, the, the mind manipulation that went into somebody just saying, I, and he said, this is. The greatest social experiment of my lifetime. And it is. I watched with my jaw on the floor. Because I wasn't sure what he looked like. I'd heard of his name, but, I mean, until you said that that was him. But he he actually is 32, or just turned 32 in May. He, I guess, I looked at the before picture of him, and he was very big. He looks like a really young baby face, just like a guy that's probably never seen more than five pounds on his body. He looks like he's been playing soccer his whole life. But he just fed into exactly the things that we talk about all the time on social media. But I don't think it was pre-planned. Well, we don't know. Like, he's only been doing this channel. Since this goes to show you the American, we live in the greatest country in the world. No matter, I don't, no matter who we pick as president. We live in the greatest country. This guy was born in the Ukraine, came over here. 2019, he started this channel. So in five years, he's gotten, you know, close to 5 million followers. His reveal episode that he just dropped three days ago has had 36 million views. Right. I mean, he's had almost as many views as that is probably who's watching the presidential debate right, right now. But... But I'm surprised, even though he has that kind of following and you see it's been shared, he's not somebody that's on everybody's tongue. Oh, I mean, no. He's not a, a name that you would recognize. Well, like uh, Tyler, your friend Tyler, he was like, yeah, I know of him. And I right. think it's one of those things, like if you've scrolled through enough of that just 
obscure content on YouTube to see what's going on, or if you ever get locked in on a mukbang day where you're like, what's this? I don't see a lot of his shorts, I don't think, on YouTube or, or on TikTok or Instagram, but he's definitely got a huge presence on YouTube. Right. And you just kind of wonder, you know, think about it. I mean, he, I don't know where he lives. He came over to this country, and in five years, he's accumulated... That kind of now, I don't know what type of revenue he's made off of that. What if he's ever done any interviews? What was his motivation? To start or to do this social experiment? Both. But to start. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, you know, you'd have to think that when it started off as the craze it did, and that was kind of right post, like pre-COVID. Right. So everybody's locked in their house. You have nothing to do but watch television and eat right. or make content. Think about the people that hit during COVID. Oh, any, I think anybody that became relatively big in the last few years, you can attribute it. I think anybody on TikTok that really took off. You, oh, well, like the group, we just started the the um, the Mormon, the mom. Oh, the what Mormon, the Crazy Lives of Mormon Wives. The soft swinging group. Yeah, I had to look up what soft swinging meant. I didn't know what it meant either. Do you know what it means? Do you know what it means to soft swing? Uh, I think it's everything but. Yeah. Intercourse. Yes. <laughs> but, again, it's just like, what is all this stuff happening in the world that I'm not privy to? You are privy to it. It's just, Maybe you, I just don't want to see just, it. It's just you spend a lot of time on the hair care videos and the skin care videos and, you know, health videos. But, I mean, who do you think he, he sits in his apartment? It's what, because these aren't things, it's not like you're eating five pounds of crab meat or something. Decadent. Wonderful. Right. No, it's pure trash. Right. Like, I don't see anybody cutting up, like, gourmet fruits and apples. And there's that raw, Christina in the raw. She does a lot of raw. She's the only one that really eats stuff that I'm like, oh, that looks great. But she's not making her money off of so people, no one ever. <laughs> watch, people watching her consume food. Okay, if you could mukbang anything, what would you mukbang? And don't say mix something with something. Just tell me what would be a great. My Mimi's potato salad? I mean, I guess that's the only thing that I can honestly say I've been craving in the last three months. It's because I usually get to see her in the summertime, and I haven't seen her this summer. And she's always making potato salad and sliced tomatoes. And But no, back to, okay, tell me about the guy who did the super size thing. Well, I don't know his name. I, he just, but I'm but sure. That was the point you were getting to is, so he did the super size thing. Yes. He does a Netflix special called Super Size Me. Mm-hmm. Shows the journey of what eating like that really does to your health. Okay. This guy gained 25 pounds. Well, that's not the, the highlight of the story. Well, no, but he gained the weight and he died of complications from cancer. Oh, we thought it was a heart issue. Yeah. But, it, look, 25 pounds compared to 253 It's almost two humans. That is a lot. Right. And wait, who's the who's the surgeon, the gastric bypass surgeon that's like, he's short and he's really mean to the people who come to see him? Oh, he's from Houston. Is he really? Yeah. I, I can't think of his name. But it's like, you exactly, you want somebody who is a psychiatrist or whatever that says, what starts somebody off on this path? And for Nick Acato Avocado... <laughs> I keep thinking of that guy. He's got the bushy. He kind of looks like Eugene Levy. <laughs> but a mini I, version? Yes. And I remember that woman, you know, my thousand pound life or something. And she's the only thing I've seen of his. And it's the outtake. And she's like, well, you know, I'm just really a picky eater. And he goes, apparently you're not. <laughs> I feel like everything that doctor says out loud are the things that my papa says under his breath when he just sits there quietly in his chair and gives people the side eye. Yeah. <laughs> but he goes, apparently you're not a picky eater. Right. <laughs> but I think probably for Nick Akato, when he started, you know, Tyler said he was actually good looking, like looked like he looks now when right. he started. And so maybe it was just People that. were even accusing him of being cloned. Well, I actually thought maybe it was AI. Oh, True. I was like, yeah, that would be a colossal mind tweak. 
I gotta tell you, I love AI. I use it almost every day, but it scares me at the same time. When you read to me what ChatGPT told you, your well, YouTube. Was it just a year ago that my cousin turned me on to? He said, you know, I got some advice for you. And I was like, really? And he's giving me advice. He said, the lady in the computer. And I'm like, what are you even talking about? He goes, you know, the lady in the computer. I said, I have no idea. He goes, I, I talked to her about your divorce. <laughs> Like, what lady? And why about mine? <laughs> right. And he goes, the lady that lives inside that app. And I had never heard of ChatGPT. When he said it out loud to you, I have to tell you a confession. When I was a little, little girl, and, you know, the lights changed from green to, I don't know if that somebody. That was invented in Houston, too. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if somebody told me this or something in my mind just believed it was true, that I thought that there was little elves that lived in the light that makes sense the cookie company you know they that changed all the that. light so when coley called <laughs> that and said, and trees the woman in the computer said this is what you should do about your divorce problem and i, I can't even like, remember what the answer was and i was like what lady what who is this lady you're talking to and i think he was like saying you know she's a really great conversationalist <laughs> you were like were you just bored one night and decided to have a talk with her so immediately i remember we were on uh, in houston i had to download the app to see what he was talking about but it's crazy how much it does learn you it right you condition and it like it gave you better answers for your bio than i could have come up with and right. i was like that's wild and that's scary right but yeah so i think back to nick avocado i think he started making money eating food on camera and then he realized that sensational, grotesque content, content, what was driving people to come and watch. And I don't know if he re really started it with a social experiment in mind, but at some point you have to look in the mirror and say, I've sold myself to the highest viewer. Right. I mean, it's why we did a foot show, right? We wouldn't have done a foot show. We did a foot show because we were like, this is gonna get views, this is gonna get traction. And it did. We had more feedback from people who've consumed our content on YouTube and podcasts about a foot episode than we have about people who have put together organizations that are helping stop human trafficking. Okay. Are you ready for what he's making a month? No. A hundred thousand a month. To eat green ramen noodles. If you say, yeah. Okay. Well, sign me up. I just don't understand that. But it's it's just like everything. Look, it's like it's like the OnlyFans. It's like, what are you willing to sacrifice? I feel like there's going to be no more real, when I say real celebrities, that's going to come out wrong. You know, we were raised that, well, first of all, even before my time, the studios owned you. Right. And, you know, there's like, no, you can't do this, you can't do that. And you have, you're under a 10 movie deal or the studios owned you. And then that got to be maybe a thing of the past in like the 70s and 80s. They started getting more independent. And then the indie movie makers came along. Right. Starting like in about the 90s. And it wasn't just the big studios. But YouTube kind of released the Wild West. YouTube is the number two uh, search engine in the world behind Google. Right. And so it just goes to show you, here's a guy from the Ukraine that can come on, do silly things with noodles, and make $5 million. But that's how bored and un... I don't know if it's boredom or if, if we're, as a society, that conditioned to want to be stimulated. But it's not stimulating. Or, or to look at somebody and say that it's the crazy guy at the circus, whether it's the woman with a mustache or the, you know, looking at somebody like that and just saying, oh my gosh, you know, look at their existence and how crazy they are. And I mean, it's why certain people got chosen to be part of the circus in the 50s, right? Right. right. That's right. what I'm trying to say. You said it better. So it, with out lack of you know i don't want to say the wrong word but it was a freak show right it that's was a freak show that's yeah. what it is it's that grotesque <gasps> you know and we talked about it too like how do you make sensational content without being the sensationalized item right but kind of what i'm getting to is you don't have to know now to get on a bus and go to hollywood to be famous oh no you just need an iphone 
Right. And a pot of boiling water. Yeah. And, and a camera that works. And the fact that he, <laughs> and that's the other thing too is like there's a couple other people that you watch on YouTube. Um, you'll remind me of that young girl's name, and she's adorable, but she's got tons of follow- Amber Scholl. Oh right. And she's doing. She's so cute, and she's so bubbly, and she buys she all this has stuff. A great wing she's got eyeliner. this great place. Empty but, penthouse. But it's empty. And that's great for her if that's what she wants. But some of these people that you know are making tons of money in the social influencer space, what are they doing with it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Somebody was saying online that Nick Avocado avocado has already gone broke. Where does he live? I don't know. Oh. I thought you could find that in your research. Yeah. Uh, I want to be wherever he's not. And he has a husband. Yes. But his husband doesn't do... Okay, so the husband's name is Orlin Home. And they've been married how long? On again, off again since 2017. Yeah, that was one of the things that was the only part that I ever paid attention to in some of his videos is they would fight a lot. And I was like, I don't know if the fighting in the videos. They met on a vegan Facebook page. Hmm. (laughs) They live in Florida. Um, but they would fight, and they would say nasty things to each other. And I didn't know if this, like, is this clickbait entertainment? What is this? Is this real? Um, and They, they cr- physically fight? Yeah, I mean, they would be nasty, rude, and mean to each other. So maybe that's why it's an on again, off again. Again, I want to be where he's not. Okay. It's bad energy. Well, we just wanted to bring this to people's attention today. Because it's something that fascinates me. It does. It fascinates me, too. And f- for having watched him for... The brief period in time that I did or seen his stuff to have seen him drop this 250 pounds to come out and shock everybody but to say he's basically observed the colony of of viewers he's created as though they were ants because he feels it was in this is my words probably very easy to manipulate his audience we're all being manipulated right by something I wonder what life was like before the internet. Does anybody remember that? There was a post the other day that said, do you realize we're the last generation that will ever know what it was like before social media? And I cried. I didn't think about that, but you're right. It's, no one else will ever know what it was like to ride their bike until the bugs came out and the streetlights came on and had to go home. Like, it's a very small group of people who still live that suburban, small town, simple that nobody knew what a mukbang was, and their life went on, and they thrived bes- beside the fact. Right. That's sad. Yeah. I'm going to go cry now and eat the rest of that. Okay. Well, with that being said, say goodnight, Lucy. Uh-oh. It's soft. <sighs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Mm. 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 All right. Good night, Lucy.